After riding hundreds of thousands of miles around the country, I've come up with a few things I look for to avoid motorcycle crashes. And I'm also gonna give you some tips on some of the best ways to survive a crash should you find yourself in a bad situation. Cars making left-hand turns in front of you. Literally, this almost happened to me today. Luckily, I caught it. It's important to scan ahead, and these are things that you're taught in a motorcycle safety class. But truly, honestly, in my experience, that car making that left-hand turn in front of you, not seeing you coming, is the number one way to end up in an accident. The number two biggest way you're gonna end up in an accident is someone hitting you from behind. That's right, often accidents come from behind. Motorcycles often have small tail lights, and a lot of times when they're stopped at a stoplight or stopped in a situation where maybe there's no stoplight at all and they need to stop for, let's say, a kid running across the street, the car doesn't see that stoplight, doesn't see you, and can ram right into the back of you. And it's not always a car. Once riding through Colorado, I had a motorcycle clip the back of me, ripping my bag off. Luckily, scooter was safe, and I didn't go down. But vehicles hitting you from behind is probably one of your largest risks. There's a simple fix. I'm not gonna say a fix, but there's a way to help yourself, and that's get proper rear lighting. A lot of people expand on the rear lighting of their motorcycle with custom kits like you see from my friends over at Ciro 3D, and it's not just to make your bike look cool, y'all. It's to keep you safe. It's to make sure you're seen when you're out there on the road. I don't think there's much more important than making sure you're seen, especially when you're stopped in the middle of a roadway. Another big one is not knowing your corner and the surface that's on that corner. So let's break that up into two things. One, the surface on the corner. A lot of times there's debris, whether it be leaves, gravel, dirt, it can be just about anything laying in the corner of a motorcycle. And when you're on a bike and you pitch that bike at an angle, it puts a downward and outward pressure as you're going around that corner. And if there's anything slipping down here, that bike's gonna shoot out from underneath you and that could be disastrous. Certainly one of the ways I've seen many motorcyclists go down out there on the road. The second half to that is not knowing how steep that corner is. Oftentimes, us bikers find enjoyment in accelerating out of the corners and accelerating, decelerating between corners. But often if you catch that corner too hot, meaning you're coming in too fast, you don't have enough time to slow down and properly corner and you end up driving straight off the corner. This can also be disastrous and is another way I've seen many bikers lay it down. It's really not knowing your corner and riding a little bit above your ability. Another one I see a lot of mistakes in and I've seen actually some really bad accidents is when you're group riding. Often in group riding, the more people you get, the more dangerous it is. And if you don't keep the bikes to a safe following distance, and I'm saying this a little different than what you might think, safe following distance as in not too far apart. When you get too far apart, it creates an opening for cars. Cars try to squeeze in, often hitting their brakes, causing an accordion effect of brake hitting behind you, and now we're back into that getting rear-ended or rear-ending a car. Keeping a tight pattern when in groups is of the utmost importance to the safety of the entire group. Sometimes leaving that gap feels like it could be safer, but really you're creating an opportunity to let a car try to slide in between you, and that is a battle that the bike never wins. Keep it tight, keep the pace, stay close to the rider in front of you, and in a staggered formation. This gives you your best chance to letting the cars just stay away from you and you avoiding an accident. Another group ride tip that I often see go wrong is too many hand signals. I think hand signals are excellent used in the right position, but when you've got a large group of motorcycles and everybody's throwing up their hands, a lot of time it's your clutch hand, sometimes it's your throttle hand, either way you're losing control of your motorcycle in a situation where you may need to make an abrupt adjustment. So although I do condone hand signals, I don't think that every rider in a group needs to throw up the hand signal. I think it's just a lot of extra hands in the air and not on the bikes. Now, sometimes crashes are inevitable. I had a lady come left of center of me on the road, and what that means is she crossed the yellow line into oncoming traffic and hit me. I had nowhere to go. I ended up taking a life flight to a hospital and spending quite some time off of my motorcycle. So staying focused, 
looking ahead of you, scanning the perimeter for what other riders might do is probably one of the most defensive things you can learn and master when it comes to riding a motorcycle. Another thing to think about is animals. Animals can come into the road, often will try to overcorrect or oversteer, and that sometimes can be the worst thing you can do. You can end up down or in a ditch or into oncoming traffic. Often the best thing you can do in a situation like that is stay steady, stay neutral, and sit on the motorcycle as calmly as you can and let it correct itself. Let it go through the obstacle, hit it, and that motorcycle will want to stand back up. It will want to stay on two wheels. And as long as you stay neutral and balanced on top of it, that's exactly what that motorcycle should do for you. Of course, there are always exceptions, and I'm not telling you this is a surefire way to ride out of any motorcycle situation. But I will tell you, it is surely a way to help your odds. Gear is another big thing when it comes to motorcycles, so you have to have the right gear. Now, people have different opinions on this, and it's a very controversial topic. I'm gonna tell you my opinion. My opinion is you protect your head first. Helmet, preferably full face, as a lot of times when you go down, this part of your face is getting hit by the road. Full face helmet not only protects you from the road, but also from the weather, rain, things like that. I've ridden through a lot of storms with guys with half helmets or three quarter helmets with no face shield, and the rain comes, they are wishing they had my helmet on. Same thing happens if you ever happen to go down, so wear the helmet. Another nice thing to have is gloves, protective jackets, protective pants. I don't always do all of those. If I think I'm in a high risk situation, I will. But in a normal riding scenario, I usually don't do full armored jacket and full armored pants. I do like to have Kevlar in my materials if I can, but often I do ride in just a vest. So I can't really say too much to that. What I can say another important thing is, is boots, boots that are over your ankle and with a good rubber sole because catching yourself and placing your feet is something you're gonna be doing a lot of and you wanna make sure you're making great contact with the ground. Me, I use a cowboy boot with a rubber sole. Today I'm wearing Justin's. Really any boot with a good rubber sole that covers your ankle is gonna help protect you from not only road debris and heat, but also give you great traction when you're at that low speed stuff where you're setting your feet down uh, at stop signs, whatever. Riding on roads where you are comfortable with the speed limit is another important thing. A lot of times, you know, people will tell you it's all about safe following distance and it's all about, you know, safety, but sometimes being overly cautious can be more dangerous. That's right. If you're riding in a 65 mile an hour speed zone where everybody's doing 70 and they're flying down and you're doing 45 miles an hour, heaven forbid, in a fast lane, but even in a slow lane, cars are trying to get around you. They're coming up on you fast. We're back to that. You likely don't have enough lighting in the back of your motorcycle and this is a great opportunity for disaster. People will be cutting you off, coming in front of you, slamming on their brakes, trying to slow down because you're impeding the steady flow of traffic. If you're not comfortable going on the higher speeds, just stay off of those bigger roads. Most bikers are gonna stand beside you and support you. We don't want you to ride outside of your comfort zone. With cell phones and texting and all the distractions drivers have these days, there's never been a more important time for you to pay attention when you're on two wheels. It is absolutely crucial that you are scoping and scanning every movement of every vehicle around you and making decisions on where you want to be. It's, it's crucial and it's probably the best advice I can give you. I hope you enjoyed my tips on accidents and how to avoid them and some of the safety gear you should really consider. Even if you don't like wearing the helmet for yourself, consider doing it for a loved one. If you want to know more about my travels and my experiences, please don't hesitate to Click, smash, punch, explode, blow up that like button down below. We appreciate you following us online. And by hitting that button, you'll be notified when we put out our next video. I always enjoy this time talking with you and sharing some of my experiences with you. I hope you enjoy it as well. If you have anything I missed, please put it down in the comments below so that the other people out there watching this channel can learn from you too. I want my page to be a community of knowledge and you can be part of that community. We'll talk to you all later, and uh, remember, I know it's scary out there, but just stay stubborn, stay focused, and stay alive. We'll talk to you all tomorrow.